Okay, we didn't manage to get through everything yesterday, so I'll try to catch up now with this little podcast. We were missing uh, solving equations with Mathematica. And uh, of course you try to look at it with pen and paper. Uh, now you try to put it into Mathematica. However, it's not necessary to know everything when you want to get a result. Mathematica can help you in a lot of different ways. And again, as I said before, if you use F1, the help, you will be able to get a lot of help. If, for example, you take this one, mark it and press F1, it will give you this list of things you can do, how to solve, solve an equation, equation solving, and you can just point on it, and you can see there is a list here of different ways to solve it, and you can read about it. And please read about it before you use it. The examples is quite nice, and more information, I quite often go into that automatically and read more about it how you can solve it. And by doing that you can really get far. But the brief one is uh, you can use this one to solve equations and systems and n solve sometimes is better when you want to find a numeric uh, solution. And of course you have the find root if you want to find roots in an equation. You will meet that one later on. But here is a small example where you I first clear the variable because uh, this is a big notebook. And then I want to solve and remember you use two equal signs like here. I want to solve when that one is equal to zero. I just press shift enter and I get the answer here. And it's in a list, these uh, curly uh, brackets is a list and within that list is another one of curly brackets and each of them will have a solution. So if for example you have this one, second order polynomial which have more than one solution, it will show the first solution here and the next one here. If you want the number or the numeric, you can just do like this and you will get the exact numbers. You can also have several equations which you want to solve together for x and we'll find the common one. So you have this equation, this one, and then it's solved. But Mathematica is really a power tool and this is perhaps a little hard to grasp uh, in the beginning but it will help you. Um, you can use the units when you calculate so you can keep track of the units and that will help you to track down arrows. But one thing you have to learn is that if you set a list here as a list saying that a, the variable a is set to this va uh, value B and this value, so you have a list of these. And then you have another list here saying that kilopascal is equal to 1000 pascal and pascal is equal to this in atmosphere. This is really a power option in Mathematica. So if you have this relation for pressure, uh, E power 2, and then you have the, uh, this, and it will return it in pascal. Then what you say is that please take this list, so it will find, look in this list, say A, what is that, that's 14, it will put it in here, and then we'll take B, put it in, and then again it will say that, we will say that T is equal to 17 Celsius degrees, 70, and then you will uh, calculate it for you. And it's the same which happens here, but when you do this, it will run through this one. If you have this one, it will end in atmosphere. And that's what's happening here. If you want to use this uh, uh, natural input, remember when you go here and 
Now I'm presenter mode, I can't show it. But you take this equal sign, you can just write boiling point of acetone, ask for the result, it will return this. This is the boiling, normal boiling point. But here you can see how you should spell it or set it directly in Mathematica if you want it. So chemical data, acetone, and then boiling point. You can ask for a lot of different data. Yes. If, for example, you want to solve the equation with respect to T, you see T is here, uh, is placed in here, you have to get that to the other side. You can just say solve P equal to you have the equation, and you say here, I want to do it for T and simplify it. There's this warning, I haven't looked deep into that one. Uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, then you'll get the solution here. So you can see T is now here, and you have how to calculate it. Then you, if you use this sign percentage, you can do the same. It'll put in A, B, C, and all the stuff you defined uh, earlier up here. And you'll say that the pressure is this in atmosphere. And then you'll get the data. Then if you want to work, get it in so it looks nicer, you can use a traditional form to help you. First we clear T so we sure it doesn't have a value. And it's empty, the placeholder. What has happened here is we just copied the expression up here, put it down here. And then we, we use a replacement and we want traditional form, and then it writes it in a nice looking way. Here's the same. You have SOL, the solution, is equal to solve, so that it, it grabs or gets the output from solve, which is this. If you want that to be looking nice, you can just say that take what is in here and put it into T, so it will say uh, T will be what is up here, and we'll place it so it looks nicely. But that's small and tweaky stuff, it's not the real core thing. Uh, yeah, of course, when you say this first, if I didn't have first, it will make a list in a list because it makes room for several if I remove it. Uh, ah, I forgot to define the other ones, but then we have to go all the way back. Pause. Okay. The reason it didn't work was because I needed to run this one first to have the values. So when I run it now, you can see there is a list in a list, these curly brackets. If I put first back, it's because I only want the first solution and there is only one, despite the warning. And then I can get this. And here is a lot of different ways to play with it. You can change the pressure, Pascal, or put it in kilopascal, gives the same. Or you can say that it's three atmosphere, and it's all because you have defined this earlier. Uh, here, you use these values when you run this. So that's really a power tool. It's a little hard to grasp in the beginning, but I think you'll get used to it. And here we ask for how precise it is the result here. They say that the precision is machine precision, and the accuracy here is in, in uh, 13 digits, 13.9. And then, of course, you have to solve this uh, boiling point of acetone. And you can ask, this here, I used it in millimeter uh, lead, 
I think a slate it's called. Uh, no, not slate. One second. I need a little help from translate here. It's Mercury, as you can see. Quixel in Danish. Forgot. So please solve this one, and you know, and remember you have until Monday midnight to solve it and hand it in. Hopefully this will help. I will make a podcast uh, soon again, and that will be for the next lesson, lecture, lecture for the next week.